It has been a while, but I need to talk about Musuku Tensai. On Father's Day, it delivered a gut punch. We had all seen the death flags and knew Paul would be dead. We just did not know how hard a punch it would be. Paul Greyrad transformed from a happy-go-lucky father to a troubled, almost failure of a father to a tragic hero, leaving a lasting mark both on us as the audience and on Rudeus. Rudeus will carry the weight of this death all his life. This weight is what makes Musuko Tensai the king of Isekai, a genre that has been synonymous with weightless escape fantasies. Paul's life and death challenge everything we thought we knew about Isekai fathers. Let's start by breaking down who Paul Greyrat really is. Paul's story begins with Rebellion, a skilled swordsman who left home after a heated quarrel with his father. This act of defiance set him on a path of adventure, leading him to join a party with Zenith, who would later become his wife and Rudeus' mother. But Paul is far from a perfect hero. He is a man plagued by vices, a history of gambling and womanizing that casts a long shadow over his life. These flaws aren't just backstory. They actively shape his relationships and the challenges he faces as a father. Speaking of fatherhood, Paul's journey is complicated further by his role as a parent. He is not just father to our protagonist Rudeus and his sister, but also to another child born from an affair with the family maid. This tangled web of relationships showcases the complexities of Paul's character and the ripple effect of his actions. But here's where it gets interesting. Paul isn't just a static background character or a one-note flawed father trope. His journey from a problematic parent to a tragic hero is one of the most compelling arcs in the series. We see him struggle, fail and try again. A painful human process that sets Musoku Tensai apart from its isekai peers. Now I want you to think for a moment. Have you ever seen an isekai father with this much depth and development? Most isekai parents are either absent, perfect or simply irrelevant. But Paul, Paul feels real. His flaws make him relatable and his efforts to improve make him admirable. This is the kind of character depth that elevates Musoko Tensai over the typical isekai fair. Now let's talk about the gut-wrenching moment. Season 2 episode 22 serves as a microcosm of Paul's entire character arc. We see him rush in recklessly to face a Hydra, echoing his past mistakes. But this time, there's a crucial difference. Paul's friends pull him back, saving him from his own impulsiveness. This moment of teamwork foreshadows the battle to come. But more importantly, it shows Paul's growth. He has learned to rely on others, to be part of something bigger than himself. Then comes a pivotal moment between Paul and Rudeus. Paul finally sees his son for who he is, entrusting him with an enormous responsibility. This isn't just a father giving orders, it's a man acknowledging his son's growth and capabilities. It's a moment of mutual respect that's been building throughout the series. And then we reach the climax, Paul's final battle. In a breathtaking display of teamwork and strategy, Paul and his companions take on the Hydra. It's a far cry from his earlier recklessness. Here we see Paul as a leader, a strategist, a hero. But heroism comes at a cost. As Paul kicks Rudeus to safety, we feel a knot forming in our stomachs. The revelation of his fate, blood trickling down from his smiling lips into his eye, isn't just shocking. It's a sucker punch to the gut that leaves us reeling. This scene encapsulates everything that makes Paul's character arc so powerful. We see his growth, his redemption, and ultimately his sacrifice. It's a moment that changes everything for the characters, for the story, and for us as viewers. But the real impact of Paul's death is seen through Rudeus. This event shatters Rudeus' naivety, forcing him to confront real irreversible loss for the first time. Despite his adult mind, Rudeus has been sheltered in many ways and Paul's death strips away that protection. 
we see a profound shift in Rudius's responsibilities. He must step up as a protector and provider for his family, filling the void left behind by his father. This isn't just a change in duties, it's a fundamental shift in how Rudius sees himself and his place in the world. Perhaps most poignantly, we witness Rudius' emotional turmoil in the aftermath of Paul's death. He grapples with anger at Paul, at the world, at himself. Guilt gnaws at him as he questions whether he could have done more. And finally, we see him struggle towards acceptance, a process that's messy, painful and deeply human. This begs the question, how do you think Rudius will change after this loss? Will he become more like Paul, adopting his father's sense of responsibility and sacrifice? Or will he forge his own path, determined to succeed where his father failed? The beauty of Musoko Tensai is that it doesn't give us easy answers. Instead, it invites us to watch Rudius's journey unfold with all its complexities and uncertainties. Paul's death isn't just a plot point. It's a thematic gold mine that enriches the entire narrative of Musoko Tensai. Let's explore some of the key themes it brings to forefront. First, there's redemption. Paul's journey from a flawed, selfish father to a selfless hero is a masterclass in character development. We see him struggle with his past mistakes, try to make amends, and ultimately give his life to protect others. It's a powerful reminder that redemption isn't about erasing past wrongs but about choosing to do better moving forward. Then we have the theme of sacrifice. Paul's final act shows the lengths one will go to protect loved ones. But it's not just about the movement of sacrifice itself. The series explores the ripple effect of the sacrifice, how it impacts the survivors, how it shapes their future actions. It asks us to consider what does it mean to lay down one's life for others and how do the living honor such a sacrifice. Legacy is another crucial theme. Even after his death, Paul's actions continue to shape the lives of Rudius and Nod. His sacrifice and flaws, his triumphs and mistakes, all of these become part of the complex inheritance he leaves his children. Through this, Musoko Tensai explores how we are shaped by those who came before us and how we choose to carry their legacy forward. But Paul's death does more than explore these themes. It challenges the very foundations of the isekai genre. Most isekai present fantasy worlds as consequence-free playgrounds for the protagonist. Musoko Tensei rejects this notion, showing that even in a world of magic and monsters, actions have real, sometimes irreversible consequences. It also embraces the complexity of family relationships in a way rarely seen in isekai. Paul isn't a simple father figure to be surpassed or a wise mentor to dispense advice. He is a fully realized character with his own struggles and growth arc. His relationship with Rudius is messy, complicated and painfully real. Perhaps most importantly, Musoko Tensai uses Paul's death to show that even in a fantastical world, loss and grief are universal experiences. It doesn't shy away from pain and complexity of bereavement instead using it as a vehicle for profound character development and thematic exploration. In doing so, Musoko Tensai elevates itself above the typical isekai fair. It shows that the genre can be a vehicle for exploring deep universal themes and complex character relationships. Paul's death isn't just shocking, it's a statement about the kind of story Musoko Tensai is telling and the kind of themes it's willing to grapple with. What makes Paul's death so impactful is the masterful storytelling leading up to it. The series takes its time developing Paul's character, allowing us to connect with him despite or perhaps because of his flaws. We see his struggles, his attempts to improve, his moments of failure and triumph. By the time we reach the fateful episode, we have a deep understanding of who Paul is and what he means to the other characters. The timing and circumstances of Paul's death are also crucial to its impact. It comes at a moment of redemption, of finally bridging the gap between father and son. This makes the loss all the more poignant. 
we are not just losing a character we are losing all the potential for what could have been furthermore the series doesn't shy away from exploring the aftermath of paul's death from multiple perspectives each reaction adds depth to the narrative showing the far reaching consequences of this loss this attention to detail this willingness to dive deep into the messy realities of life and death sets musoko tensai apart it's not content with simply shocking its audience instead it uses this pivotal moment to deepen its narrative enrich its characters and challenge its viewers can you think of another isekai that handles death and its aftermath with this much nuance it's rare to see this level of complexity in the genre and it's one of the reasons why musoku tensai has had such a significant impact paul greyrat's journey in musoku tensai is a testament to the power of complex characters in anime his death doesn't just impact the story it elevates the entire isekai genre challenging us to expect more from our fantasy worlds as we reflect on paul's legacy we are reminded of anime's unique ability to blend fantastical elements with deep human themes it invites us to look beyond the surface to find universal truth in unexpected places musoko tensai through paul's life and death shows us that isekai can be more than just power fantasies or escapism it can be a mirror to our own world reflecting the complexities of family the pain of loss and the ongoing struggle to become better than we were yesterday if this analysis resonated with you don't forget to like and subscribe but more importantly i want to hear from you how did paul's death impact your viewing experience do you think more isekai should take risks like this share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep this conversation going Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into Mr. Kutensai. Until next time, keep questioning, keep analyzing, and keep watching amazing anime.